So CPI is done and uh, the numbers came in exactly how they probably were expecting, right? They were expecting 2.3 for the regular CPI. They're expecting flat core inflation. What well, does it really matter? Because the market's already moved. You already missed out on that opportunity and you're probably wondering, okay, what's the next one? What's the next opportunity that we're gonna have? And uh, the question is, how much time do you have on your hands? If you have 10 minutes, I can explain two amazing opportunities to you, which are bank earnings. As you know, the quarter is starting all over again. The funness of streaming Tuesday Thursdays, Fridays, Wednesdays is happening in. So make sure you guys are tuned in for that. We'll be covering these earnings as we proceed through them. Good afternoon. Hope you guys are having a wonderful time. If you guys are one of the earlier ones watching this video, you will get this trade prior to close. If you missed out, that's why you guys need to be subscribed to the channel with bell notifications on so you know when these trade ideas come out. I give them out for free for you so you guys can know exactly what you need to do. But really quick recap of what's going on in the market, right? We had CPI, CPI is done. End of story, the implied volatility is jacked up everywhere and that's an amazing trade idea for us. And with Wells Fargo and JP Morgan earnings coming up, right? This is a great, great, great opportunity. Today, we're gonna to be talking about JP Morgan and Wells Fargo, how we can play their earnings, safe plays, more risky plays, giving you all the strategies for it. And it's gonna be take out three minutes per the ticker. So make sure you guys go down in the description below. I'll have it all time stamped for you. So if you want to skip, if you want to play JP Morgan, if you want to play Wells Fargo, if you're unsure which one to play, make sure you guys stay tuned for the whole video. So let's recap both of them and then go to the earnings expectations. And first of all, the earning expectations are complete crap. We've seen this in the last quarter where the analysts were saying, hey, 31 analysts expect the stock to go up and the stock went down 10%. So again, we use that as, as a temperature guide the same way we use the fear and greed index as a temperature guide. Everyone is extremely greedy. Everyone wants to make money. And if you give them a reason to make money, they're gonna take it. The problem is that this is gonna set the tone for the rest of the earnings season, that if CPI comes in horrible, that's gonna be very bad intonation. And also if the CPI comes in mix, it could be a different thing. We did front run some of that CPI number today or yesterday with the, C the inflation number perception which the markets broke out to weekly higher high, new all-time high in the S&P. The NASDAQ is rotating right, kind of wicked right at the previous resistance point. We went over this in a week in deep dive, link down in the description below if you guys wanna check that out. I'm not gonna go into all the detail of how we got these levels. You guys are here for bank earnings. You guys are here how we can make money on bank earnings. So first of all, let's jump into JP Morgan and talk about it right? Uh, Jamie Dimon most likely is going to give you a very interesting uh, narrative to the story. We're going to cover that in the weekend deep dive, what he said, right? So there's going to be two pieces that I'm going to be looking for in JP Morgan earnings. Number one, what's their expected drawdown on their margins? That is the big uh, kahuna this week for bank earnings. Everyone's expecting drawdown off margins, but the thing is that doesn't necessarily mean the stock can't go up, right? We've seen stocks where the expectation is you're going to get a hammer to the face, but you get it to the leg. It hurts, but it doesn't hurt as much. So the natural question is, oh, it wasn't as bad. Rally, right? That We've seen that time and time again. And again, look at the charts to see what it's doing. So if I just look at JP Morgan's chart, I see a head and shoulders kind of forming here. That's bearish. However, you're above the 50 day moving average. That's bullish above the 200. That's also bullish. CPI could set a different tone. So we have to be careful. That 210 number again, like last earnings, is gonna be a massive rotationary point. And that's where we really have to play off of. And again, I said this for Netflix earnings and I didn't follow my advice, but I should have. Where the 50 day. If JP Morgan at, let's say right now, the video is going live at two o'clock. Let's say it's three o'clock, 3.30. You should be number one placing these trades around 3.30. So let's get that out of the way. You need to be looking, is it above 210.98 on JP Morgan? If you're above that, above 209, okay, bullish plays are a go and also spreads are a go to capsulate the implied volatility. And we'll get into that in just a second. Because the CPI implied volatility across the market is gonna be elevated, because everyone's gonna be looking at it like saying, hey, there's risk. If the CPI number comes in interesting because we're going into earnings, that's gonna inflate the number. So you even may consider uh, putting these trades on earlier, let's say right at this video is going live or waiting till that four o'clock, 345 sweet spot so you can get that maximum implied volatility. So what are those trades? 
So we have JP Morgan pulled up here. For all those that don't know what implied volatility is, think of the maximum range that a stock can go and what the market is basically pricing in. If we look at the last, let's say two years of JP Morgan, we can clearly see that uh, the implied volatility is cranked up to the best that it can be. We're getting the most bang for our buck selling options. We're not looking necessarily to buy options. And secondly, if we jump over to the expected move for JP Morgan, it is a dead seven to seven split tie over here, meaning the market is indecisive. With the markets being indecisive, this is an excellent opportunity for us to be playing this to the constricted side, right? We want to play constricted side, especially with JP Morgan being one of those more rogue your chop fest stocks where you could dip initially and then rebound. So we're looking at the October 11th expiration. Uh, the time of recording this video, it's two days to expiry. But when you guys are placing these trades, it's going to be one day to expiry. So the implied volatility is going to jack up even more. And then the, these premiums are going to get very, very interesting. So we're, we may be looking to sell the uh, right at the one standard deviation uh calls or inputs so 20250 and basically selling the 222 uh, options so that's where we lose money and if it goes either or we lose money but us restrict around that 210 number is very interesting we got some buffer to the downside we got some buffer to the upside right so if we were to do this uh blanket tray which is a straddle we'd be blocking up 20 grand not a lot of you have 20 grand not a lot of people want to put 20 grand in a trade especially with position sizing so we're basically going to buy the outer wings uh i like to do approximately a 10 dollar wing because it gives me uh more room to play with but depending on what the premiums are so $88 versus uh, 667 that looks a little staunch, but again, remember, this is when the implied volatility move is going to contract. You're only looking to capture 50% uh, of it and then just get out initially, right? That This is the type of trades, and depending on how much collateral you want to put up, we can easily go down to only putting $200, but you're only making 50 That sounds a lot better on a prospect than making those winglets wider, and this is a case where you won't make the winglets lighter. You're basically making the contract nice and in that area so you can basically milk as much profit as you want you could go closer in the money in order to milk more profit versus the collateral you're putting up but you are putting more risk on the table i personally like to stay right at outside of one standard deviation so 222.15 uh, sorry, 50, and then 225. That'll be the call side, selling the 202, uh, 50, and then buying the 200, right? So this is the setup that is gonna be for the earnings plate, right at one standard deviation, right at the deltas of 14 and 10 for the short sides of each of the calls and the puts respectively, and thus netting us $50 maximum profit versus $200 risk. And we can make this more incentive, like I said, moving it closer into the expected move, that gets us $133 versus $367 of risk. Personally, I would do the 202 and the 222. That gives me enough room, nice little amount of collateral there. I look to maybe take 60% of that trade, uh, stop loss at $50. So, you know, one to one ratio, but it's a very high probability trade, especially with implied volatility like this. And you can adjust the trade if need to, to hold it through, seeing how everything is going. So let's jump over to Wells Fargo real quick, back to the charts, and then we'll go back to this trade to see what we're going to do with Wells Fargo. Again, JP Morgan is one of the more confident plays that I would have for this season. So coming back to Wells Fargo, as we can see here, there's a little more downside potential with this, right? A common and downtrend, uh, making lower lows or basically equalized low here, and thus it really puts us into the perspective of downside potential. If we look over at the Analyst expectations, again, I said don't necessarily trust it, but it uses a temperature guide. They're expecting more downside potential, but it's still a chop, especially with the 50 and 200 crossed right here. We can see that there's a lot of chop potential in the market with a lot of chop potential in the market. Again, we lean towards those IV trades. We don't look at debit transactions because it's not in your favor. Implied volatility is going to crush on you. You're also going to have the inability to roll for credit. You're going to have all this thing stacked against you. And we only do debit transactions when there is a net uh, positive direction that we can establish. Right now, this is just a whole lot of chop fest, as we saw with the previous earnings. This is going to be the one that I have less confidence in, just because Wells Fargo on earnings has very, very jagged volatile reactions, and why this one may not be the greatest trade of them all. But again, 
If we look at Wells Fargo on a implied volatility, it's cranked up to the maximum heading into CPI. That's also gonna help with the option implied volatility as a whole. So we really can still say that the same trading strategy is valid. This one's gonna be the same story, buying around or selling around the one standard deviation in this case, it's going to be about $53, $54 on the put side, $61, $62 on the call side, $15 for $89. I personally don't like those odds, but I'm basically going to increase the amount of collateral and bring in the winglets, right? So actually bring it closer to the expected move. And as we can see here, this, this premium is going to get a little bit better. $40 for 159 as we saw with JP Morgan was 139 for about the same amount of premium. So you have a bit of both. So if I had to pick one, right, you're putting up the same amount of money. I would personally pick JP Morgan just because it's a stronger stock with a more equalized expectation. Wells Fargo, I would even consider maybe playing the downside potential of this leg rather than the upside potential. So just kind of like just playing this side, $176 uh, collateral, $22 profit. So it's, again, when you delete one of the legs, it doesn't necessarily make it the greatest profit opportunity, but I would definitely be looking at keeping it went in a tighter range for this stock just because it's not really expected to move much along with the chop. There may be some more you want to maybe make the condor closer to the downside potential to protect against it. Um, personally, again, I would still stay with the 55, 53 put side, 62, 60 call side. That would be the tighter range, $41, $159 collateral. Again, with implied volatility, these premiums will go up the amount that you would collect. Again, you're only looking to collect 20, uh, half of that. So in this case, be $20. And that can actually happen the first five minutes of trading. So literally the amount of work that you're going to put in is basically right at the 330 mark. You're going to put this transaction on and right at 930 the following day, approximately five minutes of work each total 10 minutes of work you're going to basically net 50 percent of the profit that could be here you could play both depending on what your position sizing is you could increase uh, the amount of contracts the amount of iron condors to see what you're favoring what your collateral expectations are i'll be playing both these options for you guys and keep you guys updated what happens the week in deep dive so again Thank you all so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful trading time. Hope you guys take advantage of these option trades out there to maximize your potential playing earnings, but maximizing your profits while minimizing your losses. Thank you again.